In all seriousness, folks, let's turn this New York Knicks debacle into a teaching moment. Welcome to this week's In The Zone podcast. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and man, there is a ton going on in the association. We've got Kevin Durant's dramatic return to Oklahoma City, which included a verbal sparring match between former brothers, KD and Russell Westbrook. We've got Kevin Love's six-week absence due to knee surgery. And, of course, the approaching All-Star game and trade deadline. But I'm going to talk about the issue that is topping all of that once again, none other than the New York Knicks. In a season that has become defined by embarrassing setbacks, the Knicks outdid themselves, ostracizing one of the fans' favorite sons, Charles Oakley. This, of course, comes on top of team president Phil Jackson's Twitter war on Carmelo Anthony, Derrick Rose's one-game disappearing act, and a gang of losses. But instead of beating up on the Knicks, I want to spin this thing forward in a positive direction. Folks think of your boy as a Knicks hater, but in all honesty, I would love for the New York Knicks to represent the city right and start balling. So I can see the Knicks play basketball. For that to happen, though, the Knicks have to make some changes, not just on the court, but in their minds. So as a concerned Knicks observer, I'm going to offer the club some advice. And the best thing about it is that these are lessons we all can benefit from. So pay close attention. Always remember, tricks are for kids. The Knicks are being ridiculed as a laughing stock because a couple of their leaders, whose ages and status suggest they should know better, have been playing games rather than dealing with their challenges like adults. Phil Jackson wants to trade Carmelo. Okay, no crime in that. There's one problem, though. Melo has a no-trade clause, so the Knicks need his cooperation in any move. The smart thing to do would be to sit Anthony down and have an honest heart-to-heart talk that enables them to either move forward or seek to separate together. But that would have made too much sense. So instead, Jackson blasted Melo on Twitter by giving the thumbs up to an article that negatively portrayed Anthony as a loser. Apparently, Jackson wants to anger Anthony so much that he agrees to be traded just to get away from him. Run away fast as you can. This is childish. Not only is it unbecoming of a man who is 71 years old, let me say that again, 71, but it's also ineffective and has only made matters worse. The only thing that got Jackson's foolishness out of the headlines was his boss's equally immature behavior. Remember sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me? Well, it appears that James Dolan, the Knicks 61-year-old owner, never heard that nursery rhyme because he responded to Charles Oakley's litany of insults by having the former Knicks power forward handcuffed and dragged out of Madison Square Garden by security guards. Then, to quell the fans' outrage and show he was down with Knicks alumni, Dolan invited a gaggle of ex-players to the Garden for the next game. But rather than make Dolan the people's champ, his brazen PR stunt only highlighted the Oakley fiasco even more and took the attention away from the Knicks' best win of the season, a stunning upset of San Antonio. Look, instead of all that, Dolan and Oakley should have spoken man-to-man and ironed out their differences. Indeed, that's what Commissioner Adam Silver had them do a few days later. But why did Silver have to sit down two grown men and basically tell them, act your age? (laughs) The lesson here? That it's always best to address problems head-on. Adults, adults should be strong and mature enough to speak face-to-face about their differences. Taking a roundabout way to avoid confrontation will only prolong the problem and hurt both parties. Don't let haters get you down. Still think Melo's a knucklehead from the hood 
because he used to wear cornrows and doesn't have a college degree? Think again. Melo has displayed more maturity than anyone in the Knicks organization. While Jackson and Dolan have embarrassed themselves and the franchise, Anthony has been a pillar of stability. Jackson hasn't spoken to the New York media in five months, but Melo faces reporters every day answering questions he doesn't always have the answers to, but he does it with grace and often a smile. When they go low, we go high. Except for this Knicks mess that he had no part in creating, it's been an impressive few months for Carmelo Anthony. He was the impetus behind LeBron James, Chris Paul, Dwayne Wade, and himself speaking out at last summer's ESPYs against police brutality, racism, and disunity in America. He was the one who called on professional athletes to take action and work with law enforcement and politicians to improve our nation. And rather than shrink, fold, or sulk during Jackson's media assault on his game, Melo has responded by playing his best ball of the season, averaging 26 points over his last 10 games. While expecting success from the Knicks is always risky business, perhaps Melo's improved game and maturity can spark the Knicks to a second half run toward the playoffs in the mediocre Eastern Conference. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Okay, maybe not. Even so, we can learn these two things from Carmelo Anthony. One, taking the high road always leaves you shining. And two, ignore your haters and stay confident in your ability. Athletes should prepare for life after ball. In other words, save your money. It hurt my heart. It pained me greatly to see Latrell Sprewell and Larry Johnson, two Knicks that I covered, trotted out as pawns in James Dolan's twisted PR ploy on Sunday. During their playing days, Sprewell and Johnson threw both their triumphs and their mistakes. Look, I don't condone everything they did, but they were examples of bold, unflinching black manhood. Brothers that didn't bow, kowtow or kiss the ring of authority. Johnson once likened himself and his Knicks teammates to rebellious slaves. And while the analogy isn't perfect, it showed that he understood the uncomfortable dynamic of a league full of white owners controlling a league full of black players. Sprewell, of course, once attacked his coach, P.J. Carlissimo, and shouted obscenities at Dolan after being traded from New York to Minnesota. But that's when Johnson and Sprewell were rich and at the height of their athletic powers. I don't know their financial situations now. Hopefully, they're still rich. But it's certainly not a stretch to think they did Dolan a favor last Sunday because they need him to do them some favors going forward. If that's the case, I don't lose respect for the brothers. I just feel for them. Black athletes make enough money today that they should never find themselves in that position. They should never have to pander to anyone. In a perfect world, they'd use their fame, their influence, their privilege, their connections, and their wealth to help economically empower the masses of African-American people. But if they can't do that, then at least they should make sure that they themselves remain economically empowered. Otherwise, they can end up shucking and jiving. And if you don't know, now you know.